If you identify as pro-life, listen up. Income inequality is killing children. This is not hyperbole. It's actually killing children. Now, recently, a report from the CDC shows how the United States is now a leader in infant mortality among 27 other wealthy countries. In the report, they said that a baby born in the US is nearly three times as likely to die during their first year of life as one born in Finland or Japan. That same American baby is about twice as likely to die in her first year as a Spanish or Korean one. So <laughs> we're not winning. We're actually doing very badly when it comes to uh, <laughs> when it comes to infant mortality, which is insane. And you can't go, you can't help but go, wait a minute. This is actually happening. We're the wealthiest country in the world. And yet we have a high, very, very high infant mortality rate. Now there's a couple of reasons here, but um, let, let me get into this. Okay. Now, overall, the numbers uh, of infant mortality rates are about 6.1 uh, infant deaths per 100 live births. Now, that's actually a bit misleading, as there are actually very uh, uh, considerable state-level variations in that statistic. So that's our national number. Let's go to some of the state numbers. Exam uh, a good example is Alabama. Now, Alabama has a infant mortality rate of 8.7 infant deaths per 1,000 live births. Now that would place it slightly behind Lebanon if it were a state in the world rank or if it were a country in the world rankings. Mississippi, it's even worse, it has 9.6 deaths uh, and that would be somewhere between Botswana and Bahrain. So that skews the number. Now nationally, of course, um, we're doing fairly poorly. Okay, we are, we are, <laughs> we are dead last among 27 wealthy industrialized countries but it's weird because we have the best healthcare system in the world so how is that possible especially since we spend more in on healthcare costs than any other country in the world and yet still a baby born in the u.s is less likely to see his or her first birthday than one born in the countries of hungary poland or slovakia or in belarus or even cuba now, again, the states that I mentioned, Mississippi and Alabama. Now, notice how these are places where people have a lot of pro-life sentiments, right? And they're very high among the population. Now, these places also seem to have the highest amounts of infant mortality in the United States. Now, how is this possible? Well, it turns out, I think for a lot of people, pro-life doesn't actually mean pro-life. It actually means just pro-birth. It doesn't actually mean pro-health care which happens to be a very important part of having a healthy pregnancy. And then of course, being able to take care of the baby after having the pregnancy. Now, a recently a new draft paper kind of broke this down. And this is from Alice Chen of the University of South California, Emily Oster of the University of Chicago and Heidi Williams of MIT. Now they looked at the infant mortality gap between US and wealthy nations. Now, one thing they looked at was what, what does actually, uh, uh, what does a live birth actually entail? Now they said extremely preterm births recorded in some places actually might be considered a miscarriage or stillbirth in other countries. Since survival between 20, uh, before 22 weeks and or under 500 grams is still very rare. Categorizing these, uh, uh, categorizing these births as live births will actually inflate reported infant mortality rates. Now that's a reported as a share of live births. Now, Oster and her colleagues found that this reporting difference actually accounts for 40% of the U.S. infant mortality disadvantage relative to Austria and Finland. Now, Austria and Finland, they're number one and two in having the lowest amount of infant mortality, okay? And the United States is at the bottom. Now, the good news is about half of our infant mortality rate actually has to do with the question of what is considered a live birth. Now, that makes this numbers these numbers not so bad. However, that's 40%. That doesn't explain the other 60%. And that's where we get into income inequality. Now they write, the US has similar neonatal mor uh, mortality, but a substantial disadvantage in post neonatal mortality compared to Austria and Finland. In other words, mortality rates among infants in their first days and weeks of life are similar across all 
three countries. But as infants get older, a mortality gap opens between the U.S. and other countries, and it widens considerably. Now, as you're going to see, this is where the pro-life argument comes into play. These babies, well, they're already born. Okay. And many in the pro-life crowd, once they're born, forget about them. Oh, baby born. Uh, congratulations. Um, <laughs> mission accomplished. One more life. We saved a life. Great. Okay. Well, not only that, they move on, they forget, but they also vote for politicians that take away things like health care and food assistance for the poor. Now, why is that a factor? Ulster and her colleagues found that higher U.S. mortality rates are due entirely or almost entirely to high mortality among less advantaged groups. Quote, babies born to poor moms in the U.S. are significantly more likely to die in their first year than babies born to wealthier moms. It's the income inequality. And that's what it comes down to. The wealthier have more advantages due to their wealth than poor disadvantaged people. And that actually leads to death. <laughs> now, infant mortality rates are among Wealthy Americans are similar to the mortality rates among wealthy Finns and Austrians. So again, we're, we're the best in the world. If everybody had that same level and access to healthcare ne uh, post-neonatal, then uh, we would be one of the top in the world. But that's not how it works. The difference is that in Finland and Austria, poorer babies are, likely, are nearly likely to survive their first years as wealthy ones. Because there is an equality here. Now, could it be because there is universal health care? Could it be because there's a strong safety net? Uh, what about extremely generous paid family leave so you can actually spend more time with your baby? And recognize the signs of any possible issues with that child? I wonder. Now, of course, you know who this impacts the most, the most vulnerable among us. They write that there's tremendous inequality in the U.S., with lower education groups, unmarried, and African-American women having much higher infant mortality rates. Now, what's interesting is the breakdown of the numbers. Now, American babies tend to be born in hospitals where they receive exceedingly good care. It's the best in the world. Once they leave the hospital, that's different. Now, in the hospital, it would explain why mortality rates in the first few weeks of life are similar in the United States, Finland, and Austria. When they get home, completely different story. Poor American families have considerably less access to quality health care as their wealthier counterparts. Now, there's also the issue of nutrition programs like WIC and SNAP that are constantly being cut. When you're on these programs, it's not like these are fountains of unlimited money. No, they continue to get cut. Benefits continue to get cut. And it gets harder and harder to be able to take care of those children. Now, of course... The same people are like, well, let's cut this. And hey, you shouldn't have that baby if you can't afford it. Well, they're the same people who go and protest at Planned Parenthood. If you're really pro-life, and I know people like this, then you'll be in favor of health care for all, access to post-neonatal services, access to food, good housing, and child care. Also, sex education. Prevent the pregnancy in the first place. If they cannot afford to do it, then give them the tools and the knowledge to be able to prevent pregnancy in the first place. That's it. That's it. Now, one thing I would also do is paid leave from work for having a baby. Now, we are the only developed country in the world that doesn't require paid parental leave. Now, Ivanka Trump has actually put forward a plan, and I got to give her some credit for this, that at least gives us a couple of weeks of paid maternity leave and paternity leave. Fantastic. Better than nothing. So a little bit of credit. Um, that, should be a, that should be a thing that, that, that we should have here in America. Again, we're the only developed country in the world that does not have paid family leave. It turns out it's super important for the mother to be able to spend time with her infant after giving birth without having to go back to work two weeks later. So, look, we've got a lot to do in order to protect the already born without forcing people to have babies that they don't want or are unable to afford. So, again, if you are really pro-life, maybe it's time to start practicing what you preach and start protecting the babies that are already born. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below.
And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.